I'm ready. Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be doing a bit of a comparison video on two pistols that I've already looked at in previous videos on kind of a deep dive, I guess, a little bit. Uh, I have a thousand rounds on both of these and I wanted to do a little bit of a comparison if you are in the market for one or the other. Now, we are going to be talking about double stack nine millimeter 1911s. And I do understand that, that a lot of people are like, ah, just save your money and buy a staccato if that's what you wanna do. Yep. And I understand that. However, for individuals that don't have staccato money or individuals that just don't want a staccato, there are other options. So we're gonna kind of go through some of those options this year. Like I said, I've already looked at two of them. We're gonna do a bit of a comparison and then start looking at some of the other ones throughout the rest of this year as well. What are we gonna be talking about? We are talking about these two right here. It is the Oracle Arms 2311 and the Springfield Armory Prodigy or the 1911 DS. And I wanted to do a little bit of a comparison between these two because one, these are the first, I'd say true double stack 1911s uh, that I have had an opportunity to shoot more than a couple hundred rounds through it, more than just at a convention or something like that, and uh, get into some of the differences, some of the likenesses and what you might need to consider when purchasing one or the other. So there is that. Now, if you haven't already seen the uh, individual videos on each one of these, I'll leave a card at the end so you can choose which one you wanna look at and kind of take a look at the first 500 rounds for this or the thousand rounds for this. I've now gotten this to a thousand rounds. So I have, I would say a better position to make an educated decision or opinion about these two pistols. So let's just dive into it. Let's start with the Prodigy and talk about this one because I was able to complete the thousand rounds with this most recently, whether at uh, two gun events or local IDPA matches or whatever the case may be. And I have found that this has been a lot of fun to shoot. There are some great things going on with it. There are some not so great things going on with it. And we'll kind of touch on some of the highlights about both of these. Now, the first and foremost is that this stays true to a 1911, more so than the OA-2311, in the fact that it has very similar characteristics to a standard 1911. Uh, for those interested in a staccato style pistol, it has that polymer grip uh, that is bolted onto a um, alloy frame and then uh, obviously your standard 1911 style slide on here as well. These are going to be compatible with staccato mags, even though Springfield makes their own mags. Uh, if you have staccato mags already, you have access to some inexpensive ones, then you can definitely use that with these here. So uh, I, I like the idea that Springfield is really trying to drive the cost of ownership on this as low as possible. And that's one of the biggest components to the Prodigy is that it's relatively affordable for individuals wanting to get into this arena. This is coming in right around that $1,400 mark, which is extremely appealing to fans of 1911 and individuals who wanna get into these types of pistols. One of the things that I didn't think that I was really going to be impressed by was the optics mounting solution that Springfield has developed. And the one reason why that I liked it so much is because it's not just a plate that bolts onto the slide, rather it is wedged in there. Then that gives a little bit more rigidity, a little bit more uh, stability in this particular setup, regardless if you're going to use the hex dragonfly, that a lot of these pistols come with, or maybe you just wanna buy the pistol itself and then upgrade to a red dot 
later getting a RMR or an RMSC or a doctor style red dot, you can do that with this now. And uh, the way that they have this set up is a little bit more robust, maybe. Uh, in addition to that, it is already going to come with optic height sights, not only on the non red dot added <laughs> slide, but also with the uh, plate as well. So right out of the box, this is ready to go, regardless if you want to have a red dot or not. And that's something that I really, really did like. Again, this fits my hand very, very well, not to be Paul Harrell or anything, but it just doesn't feel like it's overly thick in my hand. <laughs> Sounds really bad, but it just doesn't feel as if it's going to be uh, too large for my hand. I do like that. I also understand that having a thicker pistol grip will actually improve your ability to shoot. Yep. And so Stand that on. is another aspect that I really do like. Now let's talk about some of the downsides to it. First and foremost, when you purchase this pistol, you are more than likely going to get two magazines, especially if you're purchasing it new. And um, that's okay, I guess. But another aspect of it is the reason why this is able to come at such a low price point for a lot of the double stack 9mm 1911s that are out there is because Springfield has found ways to cut costs in producing this pistol. And that comes in the point of having metal injected molded parts. Now, MEM parts aren't necessarily bad, but we have seen a lot of issues with the Prodigy upon its release with the safety lever shearing off or other internal components having issues like the uh, ejector uh, breaking off and so on and so forth. So things like the the hammer and the um, safety lever and the trigger shoe and some of the other internal components are going to be MEM parts. So those are going to be components that you may have to replace later on down the line, costing you more money. Or if you want it to run a certain way, you're going to have to do some aftermarket touch-ups and you know some of those types of things. So that's one of the downsides to the Prodigy. In addition to that, there is a very intentional and very specific break-in period for this. In my experience, at least the first 200 rounds needs to be 124 grain or higher to really work that pistol in. Uh, I have had several issues with this pistol. Stove piping, failures to feed, failures to eject. And it's not because of anything that I've done wrong, like limp wristing or not cleaning it or anything like that. It's just, it needs a lot of attention in that first couple of hundred rounds. So there is that aspect of it. Moving on over to the OA2311. And let me tell you, this thing is a bit of a interesting pistol in and of itself. Regardless if you're interested in 2311s or 1911s or whatever the case may be, this in itself is pretty cool because it is a hammer fired pistol, very similar to a 1911, but it's going to accept P320 magazines. And I get it, there's all the jokes out there, oh, don't drop it. But that's the only thing about this pistol that it shares with the SIG P320. It's still going to have that Series 70 trigger and uh, it's still going to have a lot of the ergonomics that you would expect from a 1911. So there is that aspect of it as well. In addition to that, what they have done is they have uh, went away from like the bowl barrel design like the Prodigy is very similar um, in the 1911s with the Prodigy having a bull barrel and having that humped slide. What Oracle Arms has done is they have tapered this barrel so that allows for the slide to be tapered as well, have certain cuts and uh, slide serrations and stuff like that. So individuals who are looking yeah. for a pistol Screw that is up like a 1911 in every single way, but different enough to make it its own pistol, this is where the OA2311 really shines. So that's another great aspect of it. In addition to that, it feels good in the hand. I would say not as good as the uh, Prodigy, but that's just my opinion. Uh, somehow, some way I'm related to Doug Flutie because I have pretty small hands. But one of the things that helps get around that is they've integrated 
a uh, gas pedal on this to allow my non-shooting thumb to really wrench in there and help mitigate that recoil to get quick follow-up shots each and every single time. So that's something I really have enjoyed with this particular setup. Now let's talk about some of the downsides to this. Uh, first and foremost is that this is going to be more expensive than the Prodigy. This is coming in right around that $2,300 mark. But what I will say in comparison to that is that this is coming with five magazines. It comes with every single plate that you might want to add a red dot, regardless if that's RMR, RMSC, Dr. Footprint, et cetera, et cetera. It's coming with all of those. It's going to be able to co-witness if you want to. Uh, so that is another great attribute to this. In addition to that, it comes with a really nice case as well. And I know, okay, it comes with a nice case and that's not that big of a deal, but for me, it actually is. For someone who goes to the range on a regular basis, I don't have to worry about trying to figure out how to transport my firearms. Uh, I, I have a, CZ P10C, I got a CZ P10F, and those come with great cases, but as soon as I add a red dot, the case is useless to me because the pistol no longer fits in there. Here, I've got a red dot, I've got a, uh, a light added to this, and it still fits in that case and is extremely easy for me just to pick up and go. So that's another value added aspect to this pistol, which is one of the reasons why $2,200 is a little understandable. So there's that aspect of it. One of the other downsides to it is uh, of the first models that were released into the market, there was only one, there was two slight issues with it. Not anything as bad as the Prodigy, but we've seen issues with the front sight moving or shimmying just from the recoil. That's been corrected. And we've also seen the plates work themselves loose as well that has also been corrected so if you were to end up getting one of the first batches of these you might experience those issues i've talked to oa uh, about that and uh, they have said that they've corrected those issues so if you're interested in purchasing from here moving forward that should be covered and that's good to hear. Not only did they listen to what was happening in the field, but they've also corrected those issues as well. So that kind of highlights the positives and negatives between the two. Uh, and again, I've, I've really enjoyed shooting both of these. I've gotten them out, like I said, into a couple of the local competitions. I've even shot the Prodigy at Clashicon, and it held up very, very well. So the question ends up being, which pistol should I get? And that's a question that unfortunately you're going to have to answer yourself. If you wanna save some money and get a, I would say a decent representation of a Staccato, the Prodigy is probably a good option for you, uh, especially if this is going to be a bit of a range toy or going to be used in competitions, IDPA, uh, two gun, USPSA, this is a, uh, a pretty good option. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more durable, something that's a little bit more duty rated, I think the OA2311 is the route to go. And the reason for that is this is going to take a lot more intentional use out of it, as meaning you're gonna have a very intentional break-in period. You're gonna to have to clean it regularly. Uh, I'm talking like every single time you go out to the range, you should probably break this down and clean it after you get home. Whereas the OA2311, I have ran this uh, well over 500 rounds before I even cleaned it and it held up just fine, no issues. I have had very few issues with this pistol, regardless if that has been stove pipes or failures to feed, failures to eject. I think out of all of those types of malfunctions, I've only had two that I can recall where this one has been pretty countless. Once I got into the about 400 round range, this really sludged up and started having failures to feed issues where I had to push on the back of the slide with my thumb. I would just push right here and that would get it into battery and then it would fire. But doing that every single time, eh, that doesn't lend itself. I took it apart, cleaned it, ran just fine. So. 
that is another aspect is deciding what you would want to use one of these two pistols for. Love both of these pistols um, and uh, I can't wait to see what the, uh, the next 2311 to come into the uh, channel is going to do as well. We're going to talk about some of those. Some of them are going to be like the um, Gerson 2311. There's a T-Sauce version. Uh, Bull Armory is one. And then also I would like to see if I can get my hands on a platypus and take a look at that as well. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks for swinging by and checking things out. I sure do appreciate it. If you haven't checked out the Live Laugh LARP podcast, I'll leave a link to that down in the pinned comment as well as in the description so you guys can check that out. Just interviewed Clay and that was a lot of fun you guys to check that episode out and uh, we will catch you guys next time as always freedom through strength we'll catch you guys later there comes a high five bye y'all